The Los Angeles County Office of Education and the LCAP State and Federal Programs Unit is proud to present School Site Council training on the composition requirements for School Site Councils. The School Site Council, also referred to as the SSC, is the group of elected people with the responsibility for developing, monitoring, and evaluating the effectiveness of the single plan for student achievement, including proposed expenditures. This video addresses the specific composition and selection requirements for school site councils. The composition of the school site council is a frequent area of non-compliance during federal program monitoring. One common reason for non-compliance with SSC composition is the desire on the part of school leaders to ensure certain groups or individuals are included on the council. Even Education Code encourages a broad representation on the Council, but the composition requirements are very clear and the process requires selection of members by their peers. Education Code defines the correct composition for elementary and secondary school site councils. While it may be desirable to achieve a council with a particular mix of groups and or individuals, that cannot be achieved by saving seats for representatives or particular groups. It is essential to understand the composition and selection process requirements for school site councils. What is required and why is SSC composition frequently found non-compliant? Although Ed Code specifically defines the required composition for school site councils, SSC composition is frequently found non-compliant. Many schools are cited with federal program monitoring findings because the membership of the SSC does not reflect the required number or percentage of members representing parents and community members, students, teachers, or other staff members and the principal. Many schools are also cited for not following required procedures for selecting their SSC members. LEAs can assist their schools by providing annual training on SSC composition requirements and the procedure for selection of members. Training is a key first step in supporting schools to follow the required selection process for their school site councils and to maintain composition requirements. Working with your schools to include the composition requirements in their SSC bylaws is another productive step to promote SSC's understanding of the groups that are required to serve on the council, as well as to support the required selection process for SSC members at each school. We'll talk now about who are the required members at elementary schools and secondary schools. Among the resources that the California Department of Education provides for school site council training, the Single Plan for Student Achievement, Part 3, Resource Index, outlines the composition requirements for elementary and secondary school site councils. When providing training in your district on the SSC composition and selection requirements, you may wish to provide this resource for your school community. Your district will make the decision whether the middle schools will follow the elementary or secondary composition requirements. The first step in understanding who is required to be on the school site council is to identify the difference in compositions for elementary and secondary levels. Let's take a closer look at composition requirements for elementary schools. Half the members are the principal, classroom teacher, and other school personnel. Of this half, classroom teachers must make up a majority of this group. The other half of the members must include parents and or other community members. A key concept to keep in mind regarding the SSC selection and composition requirement at the elementary school is parity. This refers to having an equal number of certain groups. There must be parity between the school staff and the parent and community groups. This model displays one half staff and one half parents and community members required for the elementary school site council. There is parity on both sides. Teachers must comprise the majority of the staff half. 
In order to adhere to the teacher majority requ requirement on the staff half, a minimum of five members are needed for the staff half. On the staff half, teachers must be selected by teachers at the school. Other school personnel must be selected by other school personnel. On the other half, parents of pupils attending the school or other community members must be selected by such parents. Adherence to each of these member group requirements results in a minimum of 10 members for the elementary school site council. Secondary school composition adds student members to the composition requirements. In secondary schools, half the members are the principal, classroom teachers, and other school personnel. Classroom teachers make up the majority of this group. Half the members are equal numbers of students and parents. Secondary composition requires parity on two levels. Like elementary, half the members are the principal, classroom teachers, and other school personnel and classroom teachers make up a majority of this group. What is different in secondary is that half the members are equal numbers of students and parents. While the secondary requirements for the staff half of the council are the same as the elementary composition requirement, the other half at secondary requires student members. There must be parity or equal numbers on both sides, and there must also be equal numbers of parents and community members and students. In other words, secondary SSCs require two levels of parity. Adherence to each of the secondary requirements results in a 12-member minimum SSC. During a compliance review, Federal program monitors from the California Department of Education ask two important questions. Does the school site council adhere to the composition requirements? And are each of the required groups selected by their peers? Compliance with requirements for SSCs are monitored during FPM visits or online reviews which occur on a two-year cycle. So, why is SSC composition a big area of non-compliance during these reviews? Some common misconceptions such as reserving spots to make a representative council result in non-compliance in the federal program monitoring process. Although the intent to reserve spots to make a representative council may be good, no seats are reserved except for the principal. Additionally, Schools are frequently cited because SSC membership does not adhere to composition requirements and or the SSC does not follow a selection process where members are selected by their peers. Let's take a deeper look at the member groups required for the SSC. For both elementary and secondary settings, Specific criteria define the school personnel that make up the staff half of the membership of the school site council. Keep in mind, the principal is the only automatic member of the SSC and may not delegate the seat and responsibility to anyone else. The teacher category for SSC membership refers to teachers who are providing direct instruction for the full time of their employment. The other category applies to a variety of positions at the school site and should be clearly defined in district policy as well as in the SSC bylaws. The other category is not exclusive to classified employees, but applies more broadly to people who work directly and on a regular basis with pupils, including administrative employees, pupil service employees, and classified employees. Some examples of the other category positions are assistant principal, school nurse, counselor, clerical staff, paraprofessionals, custodial staff, food service staff, and resource teachers. LEAs should work closely with schools to ensure an understanding of which positions in their district fit the other category at the school site. These positions should be identified in district policy and may be included in SSC bylaws as well as in your annual SSC training.
The parent category includes all parents of students enrolled at the school. It is important to note that parents and community members are one category. However, some specifics apply to parents who are school district employees. A parent who is employed at the school site may not serve in the parent role, but may serve on the staff side. For example, a teacher at the school site who is the parent of a student attending the same school may not serve as a parent member on the SSC. In this case, the parent who is a teacher at his or her child's school may be elected to serve as a teacher member on the staff side of the SSC. Another possible scenario involves a parent who is employed by the district but not at the school site. In this case, since the parent is not employed at the school site, he or she may be elected by the parents to serve in the capacity of parent on the school site council. For example, a parent who works at the district office and whose child attends school in the district may serve as a parent member at his or her child's school. Remember, parents and community members are one category. This category may include a combination of parents and community members or just parents. Community members may be elected only by parents, but may not vote for SSC candidates. And now we'll talk about the important student member group which is required for each secondary school site council. Any student enrolled in the school may be selected by students to be a member of the SSC. Only an election process may determine which students will be on the school site councils. Schools may not reserve seats on the council for any students. Student representatives should be elected by the entire student body. While the selection of the SSC members is not specified in law, remember that members must be chosen by peers and no seat on the SSC may be reserved for any group or individual. Membership in most SSCs is determined by a ballot vote, but could be decided in an open meeting by voice vote for each member group. Since each SSC member group is required to be selected by their peers, election procedures can support a school's process for selecting SSC members. Addressing the following questions will support districts and schools in adhering to requirements for the selection of SSC members. Where are your SSC selection election procedures described in writing? What is the process for selection of each of the required groups on the SSC? How are the candidates nominated in each of the required categories? How is this nomination process specific to parents, students, etc.? Who is responsible for overseeing the election process? And finally, how have you defined your other group on the council and how does your staff know what employee positions are part of the other category? In board policy or school site council bylaws, districts and schools may include the selection process for school site council members and indicate specifics such as how members and officers are selected, the terms of office for members and officers, the process for posting notices of elections for each peer group, responsibilities of the council, and a policy of non-discrimination. Although not required, bylaws are a useful tool to guide the selection of SSC members as well as to support a well-functioning school site council. Many school bylaws indicate that they elect members for a two-year term with elections for half the members held in even years and half in odd years. Some schools also assure additional continuity by electing non-voting alternate members who are seated as voting members in the event of a midterm vacancy on the school site council. Although SSC membership is specifically defined, it is an area frequently found out of compliance. Among the common FPM findings related to non-compliant SSC compositions are the following. 
Members are not selected by their peer group. Oftentimes, this occurs due to a lack of appropriate election procedures or the procedures are not followed at the school. Remember, each peer group is required to select their own members. Teachers elect teachers. Parents select parents and community members. Students select students. Another unallowable practice is reserving SSC seats for specific personnel such as grade level representatives, teachers union representatives, PTA presidents, community li liaisons, English learner parents, etc. Again, remember each peer group is required to elect their own members. SSCs can and should seek input from representative groups and applicable advisory groups in their community, but cannot reserve seats for anyone except the principal. Schools are also cited for not replacing members when vacancies occur on the SSC. Bylaws should address your process for replacing members in the event of a vacancy. Bylaws may also address a process for electing and using alternates to fill vacant positions. Regular review of SSC composition and active membership rosters and minutes can also keep schools from having vacancies on the SSC. Additionally, schools are often cited when parents who are employed at the school site are representing parents on the council. Working together, school and district leaders can support compliance with SSC composition requirements by ensuring that annual training addresses the SSC composition and selection requirements. Shared resources for documentation and processes as outlined in bylaws will support schools to adhere to the requirements and to maintain clear documentation for their SSC practice. Additionally, the principal and district leaders should 1. Verify that district policy or school bylaws include a definition based on ed code of groups represented on the SSC and the electing peer group. 2. Ensure that the district policy or site bylaws describe the process for selecting members. 3. Review site election procedures, timelines, and notifications. 4. Periodically review SSC composition for any changes. Providing a list of active members at each of your school site council meetings is one way to address any needed changes. And finally, review bylaws to ensure they include a process for replacing members in the case of a midterm vacancy on the school site council. You may also wish to develop a SSC handbook for your district to support the SSC selection and composition requirements at each of your schools. Some unique circumstances may necessitate a waiver from the SSC composition requirement. There are three types of specific waivers available to districts regarding SSC composition requirements. These include waivers for the number and composition of members, a shared school site council, and a shared school site council with reduced number and composition. For small schools with less than 120 students, this full composition requirement may be difficult to achieve. There are many school distri districts with two or more schools which share a common community and often a common administration. These waivers are intended for small schools, usually 120 pupils or fewer, and these schools may share a common administration, curriculum, or service, or they may share a similar population or are closely located to each other. In the case of other circumstances, schools may apply on a case-by-case -case basis for a general waiver. In the case of joint councils, there must be representation from all sites. Specific requirements apply when filing a waiver with the State Board of Education. The waiver office at the California Department of Education is available to provide assistance for districts seeking a waiver. Waivers are filed with CDE through an online waiver process. Waiver requests are required to include the consultation that occurred with the bargaining unit and whether the SSC supports, opposes, or is neutral about the waiver. 
Additionally, waiver requests need local board approval and a rationale describing why the waiver is needed. When requesting a waiver, LEAs also need to indicate any related compliance findings. The Los Angeles County Office of Education, LCAP State and Federal Programs Unit is available for assistance should you have any questions about the composition and selection requirements for school site council members.